your feet and let's worship the God of the promise this morning. Let's put our hands together. I'm not gonna wait, wait for the walls to fall. Cause I know a name that will bring them down. I've got a praise waking within my soul. Not ashamed to declare it now. Sing light of the world, light of the world, trample the darkness. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Every word will be accomplished. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. destroyed them all oh, up from the grave he's with us now light of the world trample the darkness nothing can stop it you are the god of the promise every word will be accomplished nothing can stop of who he is this morning. You know, we've all been in this season of, of 40 days of prayer and fasting, and uh, I believe that many of us in this room have been believing the God of the promise. We have been seeking his promises, and we've been standing on them, and we have been, we have been seeing his promises come to pass. Matt, would you come up here for just one second? I think it is, you can have a seat for just a moment. I think it is so important that we continually, church, tell each other of the goodness of God and what he has done in our lives because it does something for us. We may be in a season where it might be a dry season. We may be believing for something and we need the faith of someone else that will stir that up within us so that we can have even more faith, that that can be built up in us. So I asked Matt this morning, Matt, would you tell us what God has done um, in this in this uh, series that we've been in? Good morning, church. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, I've been a nurse for a while, and about two and a half years ago, I was kind of praying. I wasn't satisfied, and I was praying about, God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? 
what do you want for my future? And he says, well, I, you know, I kind of got this word. I need to go back to school. So um, through a lot of prayer and consideration, um, I decided I'm going to go back to school and get my nurse practitioner. It's a master's degree. I applied to several different schools. I was pretty much assured because I was friends with a faculty member of a certain school. Hey, apply, you'll get in. So I applied. I didn't get in. It's frustrated. The day I got my denial letter from this one school, another friend of mine just texted me and said, hey, are you still trying to go back to school? And I said, yeah. She goes, well, I heard of this school up in Georgia. It's online, apply, wait and see what happens. Fine. So I got on the computer, I filled out an application. That afternoon I got accepted. So that just affirmed to me, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, that was two and a half years ago. And throughout this two and a half years, there has been constant reminders from God that you can't do this on your own. I have to do it. God has to do it. And just ups and downs all the way through. And I'm, I'm a pick yourself up by your bootstraps kind of guy. I can do it. And God has to constantly remind me, no, you can't. You can't do it. He has to do it. So throughout this program, I, one of the big things you have to do that's harder than traditional universities is you have to set up your own clinical time. You have to go find doctors that you're going to work with to teach you. That's hard to do. Well, everything has gone really well, and I guess it was, it was actually the week that Pastor Terry started this prayer, cha prayer and fasting challenge. I had gotten all set up to do my pediatric rotations, which actually start next week. You have to plan this stuff almost a year in advance. We started the series Sunday. Tuesday, I was getting ready. To, I committed, hey, God, I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I'm going to do the Wesleyan fast every Wednesday. Tuesday afternoon, I got a call from the doctor's office I was supposed to go with. Hey, we're not taking students anymore. You have to do this a year in advance. You can ask Andrea. I was frustrated. And I remember Pastor Terry said on Sunday, hey, if you commit to do this, the enemy is going to come. He's going to attack you. And throughout that entire week, it wasn't big things. That was a big thing, but then there were just little tiny things that frustrated me over and over and over again. But I said, you know what? I committed to do this. Even though I'm frustrated, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I had a breakthrough. Prayer, fasting, was it that, that week, wasn't it, Andrea? That week, again, somebody messaged me out of the blue. Hey, I got an idea. Call this person. Okay, I've called them before. They said no. <laughs> well, guess what? Call them again. I did. I start my rotation next week. Um, again, I, and I'm one of those people, and there may be people out, out there just like me. God has to take you to that point of breaking you to where you can't do this on your own. And me and my thick skull, for some reason, I can't remember that. God gets me through something, and then I say, I got, I got it. I got this. Well, no, you don't. And I, I hope that's speaking to somebody here this morning that that you have to give it up to him. There's, there's no way else to get through. Um, one of the big songs that got me through this time was a song, Do It Again. Great is your faithfulness. You have never failed me yet. And I can look back my entire life. He has never, never failed me. And that's an absolute, guys. Never failed me. He will always continue to do it again. He will always bring you where you need to be if you just trust in him and give it all to him. Good job, man. Good job. Good job, man. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yeah. Waiting for change to come 
knowing the battle's won. For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never felt me yet. Never felt me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough.
good today, isn't he? His strength and his power, he is here in a special way. You may be seated for just a moment. I want to just give you a, a couple of uh, little things that's going on, and then we want to spend some time in prayer uh, this morning for a couple of issues. Uh, first of all, we had a homegoing celebration of uh, one of our members, our family here, uh, Earl Pennington, graduated on to heaven this week, just a couple of days ago or a day ago, so ago, and we'll let you know about the uh, announcements of his uh, homegoing celebration, but we'll continue to pray for the family. Also, uh, Tim and the team just got back from taking hurricane supplies up to the panhandle, and Tim said, I, I wasn't ready for the devastation that's there. We took up a lot of resources. That's just the first wave. We're praying and looking to see what we will do next. So thank you for helping and contributing to that. We'll still be doing some of that. Also today, we want to pray at the end of this time for the shooting victims um, there at the, uh, at the temple there in the area of everything that's going on. And uh, I just want you to know that we have a safety team that is now in place here. And you say, well, where are they? I don't see them. Well, that's part of the greatness of a safety team. They are there. And also, we're getting ready, and I'll be asking you to help us in a year-end offering. We're getting ready to put security cameras, cameras in the impact center for our children. We're doing everything. We have, uh, we have security at the front of the door. All the doors are locked there. We're also putting in monitors so the security team, the safety team, as they monitor and look at things, they'll be able to get an overview and see what's going on there as well as in the parking lot. And we'll let you know what that's going to cost in uh, next week or so so that you can help us do that for the uh, ending of this year because we want to take care of our kids, don't we? We want to take care of them. That's one of the reasons that we moved all of our classes out of there on Sundays so that that is probably the most secure place that you'll find uh, in the city of Leesburg, except if you're in the jail, you might have a little more security there. But I'd like to also take some time today, and then we're going to pray, to introduce some, some people uh, that have already been working and doing different things, but you may see them in a particular place and wonder, you know, what are they doing, or, 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 they, or but they're serving in a special way. I want to introduce you to our new administrative assistants in the front, and is also uh, in taking of the responsibility of the front of the house, and that's Jennifer Dudd. Jennifer, would you come and join me up on stage? And... Uh, I want to introduce uh, to you some of our volunteer staff members who give us 10 hours a week of their time to volunteer in different capacities. And uh, they may not all be here, but I see some are here. Uh, Catherine Spurgeon. Catherine, would you come on up? Catherine is working. <laughs> Catherine has... a. Uh, a background in finances and so she's taken a big load off of Maggie and helping her also Barbara Frost is also assisting in that administrative support is Barbara here uh, she may be here in the second service and then Paul McDaniel was going to begin the first of November he's going to be assisting uh, Tanya and myself in life groups so I don't know Paul's probably he's probably serving somewhere if I know Paul today also uh, beginning in uh, this, this coming Saturday for the men's breakfast, I'll introduce you, the men that are there, but I'll go ahead and do that today. Uh, our men's director of our, um, what are we calling it? Band of Brothers, sorry. Our Band of Brothers directors uh, is Vance. Vance, would you come on up and, and join us? Vance will have a team of about four or five guys and uh, that's his wife, so he wasn't just randomly <laughs> hugging somebody, okay? That's his claim to fame. Oh, Vance, he's Andrea's husband. There you go. And then uh, one last person I want to introduce. We've been praying for quite a while. We've had uh, applications out to uh, all the major universities, and we've went through a lot of forms and applications and stuff. And uh, the... Uh, the board and the elders, we settled last week on a, a administration, administrative assistant 
Oh, I forgot. Brenda. Brenda, come on up here. Brenda Travis. Brenda's been serving in the Generations Ministry as an assistant there, keeping things going now for months, and we haven't officially introduced her. And uh, it's just exciting that these volunteers, 10 hours a week, except fans, we're going to make him do about 20 plus all the other stuff, all right? Uh, but we've been looking for uh, an assistant to Pastor Tim with the Generations Ministry. And this week, as we've been praying and fasting, we decided to give that invitation to a young man in the house, and he's accepted that, and that's Chris Nation. Chris, would you come in and join us? So God said several months ago, you spread yourself too thin, get some volunteers. You know what's so exciting? The people that are retired and then come on as staff volunteers for 10 hours a week, that means a lot to us. And you may be retired and you say, you know what, I have some gifts I think could be used for the church. Then get through Growth Track and if you haven't found your place by then, just call Tanya, uh, our Next Steps director. And we'll be able to help you get situated along that line. So I'd like for uh, Pastor Ben and Roberta and Anita to come up. And I'd like for you to lay hands on, and Andrea, if you will, lay hands on these volunteers and these staff. And I want us to also, if you'll stand and pray with me, I want us to pray for the victims uh, with the, at the Jewish synagogue and also for the hurricane victims that are going on. But let's just, let's just pray one for another today. Father, we come to you today. First of all, we pray, Lord, for our president and our leaders in our nation. We ask you, Lord, we humble ourselves before you, ask you to forgive us. And Lord, we ask you to give them direction and guidance. Father, we lift up the victims there in uh, the panhandle. And we pray, Lord, as we've been able to do this first wave of helping them, now we're praying, God, that you'll show us what else that we need to do. We pray for the churches that we're in relationship with there and as they're reaching out to people right now. And Father, we also pray for the victims of this shooting. We pray, Lord, that everything that the enemy intended for evil, you're able to turn around for good. So we lift them up to you right now. And we pray for the safety of the churches in our community. And we pray for the safety of the people on this campus. And Lord, as we're doing everything that we can, behind the scenes with our safety security team, with the cameras, with everything that we're doing. And uh, we just, we thank you, Lord. We, we just abide in your security and in your peace. And Lord, we thank you for all the volunteers that volunteer every week on this campus throughout the week. And Lord, we thank you for these volunteer staff members that have come along and, and, and the others that are moving along to help us to move to the next step. We are poised for the greatest growth that we've ever had. Lord, we sense it. The second service is packed out. Lord, it won't be long till this service is going to be packed out. And we'll be looking to see whatever direction you want us to do. Adding more chairs and making more place. Because as long as there's one more person to win for you, we're never satisfied until we fulfill all that you've called us to be. And so, Lord, we love you today with all of our heart. And we thank you for caring for us. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you turn around and greet somebody today and say, I'm so glad that you're here today. Welcome to the Father's house. glad to have you in the house this morning. We appreciate you being here. We want to say welcome. And uh, I know God is doing great things individually, but he's also doing great things in the house, and we're glad that you're part of it. I just want to say thank you to our first-time guests for being here this morning. If it's your first time, we really appreciate you being here. And we want to let you know that we have a house party coming up in January. Usually we do it on the fifth Sunday, but because of 
Christmas and everything going on in December. We're moving that to the end of January. So it's the house party where we get to meet you. You get to meet us. We have a great time. We have a taco, no, a nacho bar and we enjoy each other's company and it's a great time. Put that on your connection card. If you've never been to the house party, we wanna welcome you. If you would do that, put that on your connection card. Um, the other thing I wanna tell you is if you'll grab your Sunday experience guide, open it up. Our ushers are coming in case you did not get one. Raise up your hand, keep it raised up until they serve you with that. But if you'll pull out this little ad sheet, you'll notice uh, upcoming things happening. We wanna let you know what's going on, but flip it over on the back, as Pastor mentioned. If we have to take another trailer up to Panama City, we will, but here's the items that they're asking for, and you can bring them in all during the week. We're closed on Fridays, but bring it in Monday through Thursday and even next Sunday. Go ahead and just get a couple items off of this list and bring it in. We want to help them. Um, as he said when he got there, he just wasn't prepared for the devastation. Uh, people are, are homeless. They have nowhere to go. Uh, if you've seen any of the pictures or video, you know it's pretty bad. And so we want to help. We want to be um, for our neighbors. We want to help everybody that's up there going through all that craziness. So again, we appreciate you're here, that you're being here. And we, we're looking forward to just an awesome teaching from Pastor Terry, who, by the way, please keep him in your prayers. He's been coughing and having stuff going on in his chest, and, and I'm praying, but I could use the prayers of the family to continue to lift him up also. Would you do that? Amen. Watch these videos and then get ready for a powerful word. Step process that happens on the first, second, third, and fourth Sunday of every month to help you connect with the church and make a difference with your life. Join us on Sundays at 11 a.m. in the growth track room in the main building. You don't have to sign up, just show up to find out how you can make a difference. Don't miss First Wednesdays where your family will have an opportunity to experience God in powerful worship, teaching, prayer, and communion. For families with preschool aged children, we offer child care in the Impact Center. Hey guys, it's Pastor Terry, and I want to invite all high school boys and real men to the Band of Brothers Breakfast. We'll hang out together, eat together, and be challenged together as we talk about real issues that men face. Sign up on your connection card today, and if you'd like to volunteer to assist with this breakfast, you can also put that on your connection card. Don't miss it. It's a free event. My name is Darth Schmader. I've come to deliver an important message. I'm calling the cops. Silence, Earthling. What do you want from me? The annual human custom of saving daylight is upon you. Daylight savings. You will adjust your clock and you will arrive to church on time or I will vaporize you with my gamma ray. Please, no! No! So how'd it go? Count him, it is a plus one. <laughs> Let's hit the road! Well, we're going, we don't need roads. <laughs> <laughs> what? We always need roads. No, honey, the p people that we're gonna visit next, they live in a houseboat. Ooh, a marina. Sounds neato. <laughs> ah, buckle up, baby. <laughs> It's happening again next week, so be sure that you're here on time. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I want to conclude today in this uh, Keys to Breakthrough series. Uh, next week, um, uh, Pastor Kevin Goff 
and his wife, uh, Melissa, will be with us. Um, and then we have our annual board meeting next week. And then I'm going to start a brand new series after he leaves called More Than Words. I'm going to look into the Bible and try to create a defense of the Bible because everybody's attacking the Bible that it's not accurate, that it's not the Word of God. And so the rest of the year, we want to look into that and end out the year with the Word became flesh. So I'm really excited about that. But 36 days ago, we started talking about the God of breakthrough. And we've been challenging you to pray. It's amazing, and I hope you go onto the website and read all the stories. We've had several people that have been, had a breakthrough of uh, stopping smoking. Uh, and, and it's just amazing. They said, you know, we've been praying about that for years. And then all of a sudden, during this time of breakthrough, God took that away from me. One lady said, it happened to me, it happened to my husband. Someone in our life group said, I, I can't explain it. It's just like that God took it away. And now I can't even stand the smell when I'm around somebody else. We've had, yeah, give, give the Lord praise for that. And now we're not saying that smoking will send you to hell any more than being overweight will send you to hell, but it might send you uh, to death a little quicker and make you smell like hell with the f- smoke fumes around you. Uh, and so, you know, not everybody desires to be delivered from that. We had a lady in our life group once and said, yeah, I smoke, but I'm happy with it, and so don't pray for me because I don't want to take it away. So... We said, well, we're going to pray for you anyway, but uh, it's whatever that you desire. She was very nice in that. She wasn't, she wasn't nasty in any way, okay? But I know that we've had so many miracles, and I don't have time to talk about all that today. But I do want to share one miracle with you of a breakthrough, because we're still fasting. I'm going to continue to fast every Wednesday uh, through the end of this year. And then in January, we start our 21 days of fasting. We start our year off fasting, doing the Daniel fast and whatever, and we'll be talking more about that. But I want you, some of you have never tried fasting, you, and you, the enemy's lied to you and said you can't. But there's some things in the scripture that says that this kind cometh but by prayer and fasting. But I want you guys to know, Saturday morning, we will not be fasting. Men, we're having pancakes, eggs, sausage, muffins, bacon, coffee, and water. So uh, if you're coming to the men's uh, breakfast on Saturday morning, fill out a connection card because we want to be sure that we have enough food for you. It's going to be awesome. But I want you to watch this little snippet, and I hope you can hear it because I grabbed it in the hallway of a Sunday morning of my friend Liz talking about a breakthrough that God gave her in the area of fasting. Listen to this. Hey, I want to share with you because right before I went to Cairo, Egypt, Liz came to me and said she's going to be fasting for me. And I felt the strength of that. And then today, she shared this testimony with me. And I want you to hear it because some of you have said, I've never fasted. I don't know how to do it. But I want you to hear what she said. Yes, Terry. Yes. Um, on that Sunday that you were leaving well, for that week to go to Egypt, um, you came down to greet people. And you came over to me and I said, Pastor Terry, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me so clear and said, while while Pastor Terry's gone, you must fast for him. So I've never really fasted a day in my life. Well, I have, I've tried, but I've never been able to really do it. So when the Lord spoke to me that day, it was so clear that I had no problem. The whole time you were gone, Wow. I had no problem fasting for you. It was unbelievable. Wow. It really was. And now, now I know I can fast any time. Any time because I feel the Holy Spirit is in me. And when I need to fast for anybody, for you or whoever, I can just do it. That's amazing. That's amazing. And Liz, that's going to be a, a real help to a lot of people who said they've never fasted. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I know you didn't want to do that. But, but you know, you. you have to be, of course I wanted to do that. <laughs> but you know what? When the Holy Spirit speaks to you, you must listen. Yes. And he speaks to you really clearly. Amen. And he was awesome. awesome. Thank you. All right. Amen. I want us to turn back to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's the passage that I opened up with 36 days ago. And I want to go back into that because it's one of the best examples of breakthrough prayer. Uh, And it's about a guy by the name of Jehoshaphat. He's a king in Israel. Three army nations come against him, and he knows he's going to be defeated. I mean, this is not one of those things that maybe we'll get out of this, but he knows 
without some sort of breakthrough, he's sunk. There's no way that he's going to make it. And so he prays and he fasts and God delivers and gives a great breakthrough. Now, you may be saying, as we get ready to look at this passage this morning, so go ahead and turn there, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. You may say, but how does a military strategy of a real war like that teach me anything about the battles that I'm facing right now? Because I'm not facing a, like, a physical battle. I'm really facing a more spiritual battle. And that's a great, great understanding of the battle that we're in. In fact, if you look there in your notes and on the screen, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against, read it with me, rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So in other words, Paul says, as you've just said, my battle is not a fisticuff or a sword or a, or, or a javelin, but my battle is something that I'm battling really internally in my mind and the things that are coming against me. And that's really accurate because we are fighting invisible powers. But if you look at it, they're clear levels of authority. So it's not just perchance that you're under attack this morning, but there are levels of authority. And Paul goes on in that Ephesians 6 and says we should put on the whole armor of God. Remember that? Put on the whole armor of God. And then he says after you put on the whole armor of God, he says what are we to do? We're to stand. And then after he says we're to stand, what does he say? We're to pray. So prayer is not part of the weapons of the armory. Prayer is how I engage in this invisible battle. So it's so key that we understand how to pray a breakthrough prayer. So my question to you again today is where do you need a breakthrough? In your finances? In your health? In your job? Marriage relationship? Maybe friendship? It's an area that you say, it's just out of control. I can't manage it. I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what to do about this. So we're going to learn today some principles of breakthrough prayer. So I'd like for you to turn with me now to 1 Chronicles. Keep your Bible open. I hope you brought it today or on your smartphone with a click, whatever, because I'm going to be looking at a lot of scriptures, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. So I'm going to be looking at a lot of scriptures that won't be in your handout or on the screen. So I pray that you'll follow along with me. After this, chapter 20, verse 1, after this, in other words, after the revival that they just had, after the renewal they just had, isn't it interesting how you always, when you get one breakthrough or you have God to do something special in your life, it's right after that the enemy comes, or today after this service, as God will bless you today, when you're walking to your car, he will begin to attack you again. Well, it won't last. It's not real. It, it won't work. So after this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Minuites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It's already in uh, Hezron, Tamar, uh, that is in Gabia. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. So I want to look at this today and break this down. I hope you go ahead and read the rest of this chapter this week or maybe today. But I want us to look at how to pray for a breakthrough, okay? How to pray for a breakthrough. In fact, if you'll take your hand out from today... And these points that I put on here, these are great points to use in your daily prayer time. So this is an example of how to pray a breakthrough prayer. So here it is. Number one, start by focusing on God, not my problem. Start by focusing on God, not my problem. So often when we have a problem or an issue or we need a breakthrough, we immediately come to God. Oh, God, look how big this is. God, look at this problem. Look at this issue. Look, how, look at this sickness. Look at this lack. And we start with the problem. But notice what he does in verse 3. He hears the bad news. 
Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved. Notice, he resolved. Number one, he's going to start this. He's going to start focusing on God instead of my problem. So he's going to pray. He's going to fast. And then he's going to obey God. Now notice what he does in this prayer. Verse 6. I first of all want to remind myself of God's greatness and power. Remind myself of God's greatness and power. Would you say that with me? Remind myself of God's greatness and power. Look at this verse, verse uh, 6. Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. He simply starts off like this. God, you're a big God. You're a loving God. You're a breakthrough God. There's not a problem that's too big for you. The bigger God gets in our mind, the smaller the problem gets. And then second of all, remind God of his promises. Say that with me. Remind God of his promises. Look at verse 7. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before the people of Israel? And give it, you gave this land forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. He simply says, God, you're a big God, and let me remind you of the promise. You said this would be our land, and now the enemy's trying to dispel us. God, you're a big God, and you said I could walk in healing. You said I could walk in love, and the enemy's really coming against me. But this is what you said, God. You would keep me in peace if I kept my mind on you. That's why it's so important that when you get ready to pray for something, excuse me, when you get ready to pray for something, that you get the promises of God in your lips so that you can begin speaking those. God loves for us to speak his promises back to him. Remind him of his promises. So number one, start by focusing on God, not my problem. Number two, tell God, I can't do this. I need you to do this. You see, in a breakthrough prayer, you're not just asking God for help. You're saying, there's no way. There's no way this can happen without you. There's no way. So number one, start by focusing on God, not my problem. Number two, tell God, I can't do this. I need you to do this. Look at verse 12. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have what? No power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. He's not saying, Lord, I just need your help. He's not saying, Lord, I need a little wisdom. Lord, I need a little strength. This is not a normal break. This is not a normal prayer. It's a breakthrough prayer. He's simply saying, What I'm facing right now is beyond my control, and I feel powerless in how to handle this. How many of you ever been to that place in life, right? Uh, If you can't identify that, let me give you this picture. You're holding a crying baby, and everything you do to try to quieten that baby doesn't work. Remember that feeling? Remember how that is? Pacifier, bottle, changing diaper, nothing works. They just keep, and isn't, as a parent, as a grandparent, don't you feel like at that time just powerless? You know, oh, what, what, what else can I do? So this is what he's saying. This breakthrough prayer, listen to me, because this is going to really speak to somebody today. You've been thinking that it's all about you and what else that you could do and how you could handle this. He says, I feel powerless. I can't change this. And there's no way. Now, sometimes we have, uh, we have friends or family members that are wrapped up in the enemy's deceit or an addiction. And you talk to them about that. Don't you see how you're destroying your life? And they just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. And you get to the place that you say, I don't know what else I can do. I've suggested, I've done this. I've done something else. Maybe God is saying to you today, you're at the right place. And what he wants you to do is simply come to him and say, God, I'm powerless. I don't know how to handle this. Have you ever tried to 
encourage somebody or witness to somebody that's caught in the deceit of the enemy, and the, the enemy's lying to them. The Bible says what they're doing is wrong, but yet they just, well, yeah, and they just sort of laugh and giggle. <laughs> it, it's okay, yeah, thank you for praying for me. It, it's okay. Don't you walk away from that saying, what else can I do? What words can I say? Sometimes like that, God is simply saying, just raise your hands to me, an awesome God who's never failed you, and just simply say, I'm powerless. I don't know the answer. If you don't do this, it's impossible for this to happen. That's why we need a breakthrough prayer. So what do we do at that time? Well, we just have to wait and trust. We pray. We do what God wants us to do. But sometimes we just have to stand. Look at verse 13. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. They all stood. Not five minutes. Probably not an hour. Maybe hours. Doing nothing. But simply standing. Looking towards heaven. We need you. We can't cope with this by ourselves. And notice, it was the whole family. So parents, if you're doing a breakthrough prayer, get your kids involved in that. Say, this is what we're praying about. This is what, so that when it happens, they can understand at an early age that God is the God of breakthrough. So number one, start by focusing on God. Sorry, my mouth is like cotton on the inside. Start by focusing on God, not my problem. Second of all, tell God, I can't do this. I need you to do this. And then the third thing, we're going to listen to what God says. Say that with me. Listen to what God says and then do it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not enough to listen. You got to do it. So look at verses 15 through 18. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Read this with me. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Read it out loud. For the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow, keep on, march down against them. They will be climbing up the path of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert Jerul. Now read verse 17 with me out loud, everybody. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm. See the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Prayer is a conversation with God. If you're just doing all the talking, that's called a monologue. But prayer is, he started off, God, what can we do? We can't do this without you. And then the word of the Lord comes, and it simply says this. In fact, some of you who love trivia will love to know that verse 17 is the middle verse of the Old Testament. It's the middle verse of the Old Testament. So in verse 17, here where it is, that's the middle. So everything after and everything before that centers on that one blessed verse that says, rest in the Lord. You won't have to fight in this, for the battle is the Lord's. So we say, okay, but how do I hear God? I need God to talk to me. Well, we hear God through his word, right? And we hear God through the Holy Spirit that drops thoughts into our thoughts. We are a word and spirit church. We study everything. We balance everything on the word of God. But we're also sensitive that the Holy Spirit speaks to us individually, speaks to us corporately with tongues, interpretation, speaks to us with prophetic utterances. He speaks real words today. But we don't just go on that. We go, what does the word say about that? So we are a word and spirit. This book is full of the word of God. Some of you pray like this. Lord, if you could just show me. If you you could just give me a sign. Just give me a sign in the sky. And the Lord would say, 
you probably wouldn't look. If I gave you my words in a book and you're not in my book, why do you think I would give you a sign in the sky? I mean, listen, stop looking for a vision and start looking for a verse. Stop looking for God's will somewhere out there in no man's land and start looking into his word and let God talk to you. So here's what God says to us today about our breakthrough. First of all, don't be afraid or discouraged. Say that with me today. Don't be afraid or discouraged. Say it again. Don't be afraid or discouraged. That's on the back of your notes. We need to say that again. Say it it like you think God would say it to you. Don't be afraid or discouraged. And then the second thing is simply this, from those verses we just looked at, your victory is in me and my word to you. Your victory is in me and my word to you. So what did God, what's the word God gave you? What's the word God gave you? That's what's so critical, and and that's what's so important. And then the last thing is simply this. Keep, what did I say? Keep the next one. Is there another fill in? Bring it up. There we go. Keep serving in your position. Keep serving in your position. I said that because I kind of got lost in my notes here. Thank you guys in the back for keeping me there. Keep serving in your position position. Keep serving in your position. Look at verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you. Take your position and stand strong. Take your position and stand. Listen, the Lord spoke to me this week and said, here's a critical key that a lot of people miss in their breakthrough. A non-serving Christian is not found in the Bible. God gave you spiritual gifts. God gave you talents that he wants you to use in his body or in our community to make a difference, to make a difference. So that's why it's critical for you to go through growth track. Growth track happens every first, second, third, and fourth Sunday at 11 o'clock in the growth track room. And in the growth track, we help you to discover who you are and to find your place in the body of Christ. I believe with all of my heart the reason some people don't ever experience a breakthrough prayer is because they're just too selfish and lazy. You pray, and God says, I'll do certain things for you. But in this, he says, I want you to find your position, and I want you to stay in that position. There are a lot of people who start serving somewhere in the church. Well, I'll serve in kids' church. And then it gets a little uncomfortable. It gets, well, I'm tired of serving. Find somebody else. They start serving as an usher. Well, I'll serve. And and then it's a little hard and this. And somebody looks at you cross-eyed and, you know, I'll quit. And there are a lot of people who come every Sunday and they never serve anywhere on this campus. They never come through the week. They're never part of a prayer team. They're never in a life group to serve in a life group. They never serve in the community anywhere, in a civic organization, in a place to help our community. And it's all about, I'll come Sunday, I hope they sing the songs I like, I hope he preaches what I need for me. Well, I'm telling you today, maybe what the Lord is saying, one of the hindrances to your breakthrough is that you haven't found the place to be in your position with your talents and your gifts. He has given you, you see, you're part of the body of Christ. So I could have got up this morning, and uh, my throat could have said, I ain't going with you today, because that's how my throat feels like right now, all right? And my eyes are blurry. I can barely read the Bible. That's why I'm sort of hanging it sideways. I have no idea what's going on. I guess all this congestion I've got or whatever it is. So that part of me would have liked to have said, I'm going to stay home in bed today. But my legs that I swing out really quick over the side of the bed says, you're going with me. Because if you don't go with me, If you don't find your place, it doesn't matter how much Terry moves around. 
But if they're not eye contact and words, then people are not going to get anything. So come on, drag your sorry, silly self up and find your place. Get in it. Could I encourage you? Even if you've been through growth track and you haven't found your place, we have a place for everybody. We have a place for people like Vance that never meets a stranger. You ever met anybody like that? They never walk into a room and he's talking as he walks in, he's talking as he walks out. You ever met like anybody? I mean, never meets a stranger. I like to tag him along because he can do all the talking and then I can think about something, all right? Well, we got places for people like that. And then we got places for some of you that say, you know, I've, I, I, I don't have anything to do with I have to communicate with people. You can push buttons. You can learn to run a camera. You can do a million other things. Next door, you can just sit over there, right, Brenda? Pick up some of those little babies if you pass the background check. See, you got to pass the background check. Just rock that little baby. And you just say to that little baby, God has a great plan for you. God loves you. He loves you with all of his heart. One day you're going to grow up and you're going to be a fine man or woman of God. Doesn't matter what's going on in your home. Doesn't matter how much argument you've heard this week. Doesn't matter what meant bad language you've heard this week. They are rocking in the arms of someone who said, I found my place and I'm going to do that. All of these music musicians that are up here, all these singers found their place. So I just encourage you to find your place in that position and just simply say, I will not be moved until God wants me to move to another place of serving. I meet some people like this that says, you know, I just think that I should move to a different city. I should just move to a different state, and everything will be different. A fresh start, starting all over. Guess what? When you go there, you take you with you. I just, if I just find me another husband, another wife, when you do, you take you with him. Find your position and stand with your eyes up and say, Lord, I'm looking to you for my breakthrough. Oh, oh wow. Has God ever lost a battle? Then what are you sweating? If he's given you a promise, he says, listen to me, verse 20. Judah and the people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God and you'll be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, the, the word that's come forth, and you'll be successful. Number four, thank God in advance for the answer. Thank God in advance for the answer. While you're standing there in your position, wherever you're serving, maybe you're passing the offering buckets today. And just to yourself, you're saying, Lord, I'm in my position and I thank you for the breakthrough that's coming. This is going to be the week of my breakthrough. I just thank you for that. Maybe you hum a little bit. Just, you, just, you just hum, you know, and you just, you're just thanking God. But, but look at this. This is so critical. Thank God in advance for the answer. Beginning at verse 21. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him. Are you kidding me? I mean, is this the weirdest battle strategy you ever heard? He doesn't call his commanders and say, how many swords do we have? How many javelins do we have? You know, the, the, the army's a days away from them, and they don't have time. How much do we have? But listen to what he does. Listen to this crazy battle tactic. You sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, read it with me, Give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures. We sing a song like that, don't we? Uh, his love never fails, never gives up, something like that, right? Isn't, isn't that a song? All right. Sing a little bit up for me, Andrea. You know that song. Sing it out. Sing it again. Sing it again. Listen, that's as deep as, as deep as theology as they went right here. As they began to sing and praise, 
The Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah. And they were what? The Ammonites, the Moabites, rose up against men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. After they finished slaughtering the men of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. This is a battle strategy that's just based on we thank God because his love never fails. His love never gives up. His love never runs out. Now, this is a metaphor. This is a metaphor of the principle that we thank God in advance for the breakthrough. We thank God for advance in the, for the breakthrough. I, I'm alarmed sometimes when I see people come late because they want to miss the music. you got to be kidding me. When I look at a passage like this, it says they sent the choir, they sent the worship, the music out ahead of the army. And what were they doing? They were thanking God in advance. Uh, some of you are like prison singers. You're always a little few bars behind and you never have the right key. But that's okay. That's okay. Because the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I have to watch some of these syncopated songs. Is that the right term, Andrea, that they sing? It's like they hit a line, and then there's another line in it, and I'm ready to go. And they don't sing, and sometimes I sing out, and I mess it all up. And so nobody ever sits around me that wants to really get it accurate. They move somewhere else. That's okay. When I read the words this morning... Even though I couldn't sing out the way I wanted. I was reading those words. And I wanted those words to get down in me. Because I know there's a principle that says send Judah first. Judah represents praise. Send praise first. That's why when we get together with the gathering, we usually spend some time in praising first. Because there's just something that says Judah plows. In other words, that praise plows up the ground and makes ready. So listen, some of you that get in a little late for the word, you've been missing a key to the breakthrough. And the key to the breakthrough is, listen, you know one of the, I love this. Not everybody stands and sings when we sing. That's okay because that's a sign of a growing church. That's a sign that people come and they don't know the songs and they're embarrassed to sing. But when they look at the words and read the words and they hear everybody else singing, there's something that happens. So we want to begin to thank God in advance. And number five, expect God to turn the battle into blessings. Number five, expect God to turn the battle into blessings. Look at verse, uh, verse 24. Begin at verse 24. When the man of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert, they looked toward the vast army. They saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder, and they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. Wow. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Baraka, where they praised the Lord. That is why they called the valley of Baraka to this day. Baraka means, means uh, blessed, blessed. So they changed this trial into a place of blessed or blessing. Then led by Jehoshaphat, all the men of Judah in Jerusalem, returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets. Then the fear of God came upon all surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against them. So here's what I'm saying. The critical reason we want to break through prayer is that we turn back around and we give all the glory to God, but then people that are around us say, how did that happen? I saw you were so under the gun. How did it happen? And you say, it's because my God is a God of breakthrough, and he can cause the valley that's a valley of trouble to become a valley of blessings, and all of a sudden now, what you went through becomes a witness to other people so you can encourage them to go what they need to go through. 
So turn with me to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I want to just end out just real quick. Second, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. So you say, okay, Terry, you've told me all this today, but now how can I apply all of these strategies to the battle that I'm going through? Verse 3, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war, war as the world does. Now think about that. Here's three armies, vast armies. Oh, I mean, they've just, they have, Jehoshaphat is totally outnumbered. So here comes the army of God marching. I don't know if they had, they probably had those one-eyed binocular type things. Monocular, whatever you call it. I just made up that word. I don't know. Somebody will know afterwards. And so they look and say, how many swords they got? How many javelins? You're not going to believe this. This guy's insane. This guy's crazy. I see a flute player. I see somebody carrying a harp. I see somebody with a tambourine. And they're singing. Let me look at that again. I ain't never heard nothing like that. See, God's battle strategy, if you're waging war here, you're going to miss it. Because the enemy's going to lie to you here, and you're going to miss it. It's all right, men, to get in your truck on the way to work tomorrow or your car or your motorcycle or your go-kart, whatever you ride, and, and, just be, and it's all right to begin singing a song of breakthrough. God, I thank you that I'm a man of breakthrough because you're my God. I thank you I can lead my family the way you want me to lead, and nobody's there to say you're singing off too. Nobody's there to say those are not the right words. You know what you're doing? You're standing in the battle strategy of the Lord and you're not fighting like the world fights. Here's how the world fights. They want to argue or they want to try to talk you into their position. For we battle not as the world wages. Listen to this. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, the weapons we fight with have divine power. What kind of power? To do what? Demolish strongholds. You know what we fight with? Fasting, prayer, the Word, and obedience and praise. How are we going to get a breakthrough? Well, we're just going to pray, and we're going to fast, and we're going to read the Word, obey the Word, and we're going to begin praising God in advance for the breakthrough. Praising God in advance. It says, our weapons demolish strongholds. The Greek word there, stronghold, is the word akaroma. And it's the image of a castle that has a dungeon or a prison. Literally, here's what this word means. It's a prisoner locked by deception. It's someone that the enemy has told them a lie, and they believe that lie, and that's all they can say. I'll never get a breakthrough. I'll never lose weight. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never get back to God where I was. I'll never be able to continue to serve Him. I'll never find a husband. I'll never find a wife. My marriage will never be any better. I'm never, everybody else didn't work for everybody else. So we believe that lie. And it puts us in a stronghold, a prison. Because that's the battle. The battle is between these ears. That's why it talks about us renewing our mind with the Word. Behind every lie, behind every lie is a fear. Behind every lie is a fear. A fear that this is not going to happen. It won't happen. I can't make it happen. And behind every fear is an idol. Behind every fear is an idol. Behind every fear is an idol, what we're really trusting in instead of God, what we're believing in. Verse 5 of 2 Corinthians 10 says this, We demolish arguments and pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought. The New Testament says, I capture rebellious thoughts. Terry, you're not going to make it through this one. 
I take that thought captured right now. How do I capture it? That's a lie. I'll say that out loud. That's a lie. Because here's what God says. God is greater than anything I face. God will take me through this. He's brought me through other things. And he'll take me through this. Oh, Terry, that person doesn't like you. And they're out to destroy you. Oh, no. I'm not going to believe that lie. I'm going to love everyone. You, you better get back at them. You better put them straight. I'm going to love everybody. I put my trust in you, God. I'm not going to believe that lie. I'm not going to believe that lie. Your husband will never be saved. That's not true. That's not true. It's God's will that everyone be saved. That's not true. That person will never come to their senses. That's not true. There was a demoniac of Gadara that had enough demons in him to drown a whole herd of swine. But when Jesus came to that shore, he came running to Jesus, and his life was changed. So I take captive that thought. I'll not let that thought stay in my mind. I'll make that thought be obedient to Christ. And I'll punish every act of disobedience. How do I do that? Through confessing the word and through praising God. Just pray. Yeah. Man, those thoughts, the enemy hates it when you start praising God. See, he can't read your mind, but he hears your words. So he hits you with an onslaught of four or five armies coming against you in your mind. A sickness comes and you wonder why the sickness you wonder why God answers the prayer of everybody else but not you, and then the enemy starts lying to your mind. Oh, it'll never happen to you, it'll never happen to you. Here's what the enemy hates, is that when you look up to the Lord and you say, well, Lord, without you, this breakthrough can't happen. But I'm going to start praising you in advance because your word says this. Now, I'm punishing that lie. I'm punishing that lie with the truth of God's word and with my worship, with my worship, with my worship. So, what's dominating your thinking? I'm not good enough. I'll always battle with this. I'll always be inconsistent. I'll never get ahead. I'll always just be an average student. I'm not enough. When your thoughts go to the negative side, and that self-talk is not saying what God says about you, listen to this. You might want to write this down. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your life is moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. So when those things come against me, what do I say? I say something like this. It's on the screen. I have everything I need to do all that God calls me to do. Christ in me is more than enough. Worry is not my master. My faith is in Jesus. I'm not easily offended. I am full of unconditional love of God. My God is with me, and he'll never leave me or never forsake me. Now, maybe you couldn't write those down, so you take out your trusty little cell phone, and you take a picture of that, and you've got it down so that you can look at that later. When size. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to seek God every beginning of the first of a day. We're going to worship God the first of every week. We're going to fast the first of the year as we come into January, and we're going to return the first of our increase in tithe and offering in just a minute. Let's bow our heads right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I believe your word. I believe your word has spoken to us today. There's different principles that have jumped out of this passage that we will incorporate into our life. And we'll be able to stand. We'll stand in our position. If we don't have a place to stand, a position, we're going to find it. We're not going to waste another month. We're going to find a place that we can serve, get beyond ourselves and serve because you've given us gifts that needs to be used. Father, I pray for anyone here today that's never invited you into their heart and into their life. I pray right now by the power of your spirit that you'll draw them to you every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you've never invited Jesus into your heart and into your life, or maybe you feel you've gone away from him, but today's the day that you want to rededicate your life to him. Right now as the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, 
is nobody has to talk you into it. But you just know on the inside of you, in your knower, that you're lost and you need a Savior. And his name is Jesus. And he said, whosoever will will call upon me will be saved. You simply say today, today, Terry, I need to be sure that I'm ready to meet him. Or maybe I need to rededicate my life to him today. Would you raise your hand right where you are and make eye contact with me and say, that's me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you in the back. Thank you. Others today, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody's talking you into that. That's the power and the presence of the Lord that's drawing you because he says, I love you. I have a great plan for your life. He's the God of breakthrough. Would you pray this prayer with me? Father God, thank you today for loving me and for caring for me. Today I surrender my life to you. I give everything to you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life and to be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate you taking time to be with us here at the Father's House. Hey, if you're ever in this area, please stop by and be with us. We'd love to host you and you be our guest and you'll find some of the greatest people in the world. But let me say especially, if you prayed that prayer with me today and you surrendered your heart to Jesus, I have a book that I want to send you. So if you'll call the church office and just let us know, hey, I prayed that prayer, we'll be able to send that to you. And if you don't have a Bible, we'll send you a Bible because we want to help you get on this journey with the Lord. Also, I'd like to say thank you for your support, your prayer support. Thank you that many of you give financially to make sure this ministry can continue to provide uh, uh, every, every, to provide online services like we do now and to keep the message going and keep our missionaries on the field. So if you'd like to give, you can give online uh, or you can call the church office or you can send it by snail mail and say, hey, I, I want to partner. I want to be part of the Father's house and all that you're doing. So I hope you continue to be with us on these Sundays at 9 and 11 uh, if you're in town. And if not, you can watch online. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.